Chapter 2, Operating on Variables. So, Sophia, you're going on the right track. You've written your very own Hello World code in Python. Now, let's do some math. All right. I love math. Okay, then tell me, what is 2 times 6? 2 times 6 is 12. Good. What is 18 times 12? Easy peasy. 18 times 12 is 216. Good job. Then what is 6,742 times 123? I don't think I'm that good in math. Can Python help me with that? That's what I was just getting at. Come on and start the idle shell, as I'd shown you before. Okay. I have to go from start to Python to idle. There. Now type 6742 asterisk 123. Wait, what's the asterisk for? The asterisk is what computers use to represent multiplication instead of the X that we humans use. Now, press the return key. What do you see? The number 829,266 is the output and the answer we're looking for. The symbol asterisk is called an operator. Look at the table to know which symbols Python uses for different operators. Now, let's take a realistic scenario. Let's say you own a patisserie and you sold about 520 cupcakes, each costing $25. How much money would you earn? Find it out on Python. Okay, then that means I have to multiply 520 by 25 to get the total earnings. Then press return key. I would earn a total of $13,000. Great. Now from among the total cupcakes, make 12 of them get spoiled before being sold. How much would you have earned then? Well, from 520, I have to subtract 12 and then multiply by 25. So, if I press return key, I get... The answer is 220. Wait a minute, that can't be right. How can my money earned be less than the number of cupcakes sold? See, that's where the catch is. You were right in subtracting 12 from 520 cupcakes before multiplying with $25. But how Python sees this is... First, multiply 12 cupcakes with $25, and then subtract from 520. Here's why. In Python, every operator has a particular precedence or order. It performs multiplication and division operations before doing addition and subtraction. So, if it sees a calculation with more than one type of operation, it follows this order of precedence in executing it. Also, Multiplication and division have the same precedence, while addition and subtraction have the same precedence. So, in cases where the Python sees more than one operator with the same precedence, it calculates from the left and moves one by one to the right. So then, tell me, Sophia, how will Python try to perform a calculation like this? 1,267 minus 56 times 14 plus 18 divided by 2. Well, the precedence of multiplication and division is before addition and subtraction, so it will multiply 56 by 14 and divide 18 by 2 first, so it will solve it using the following steps. 1,267 minus 784 plus 9 equals 492. Great. Now, coming back to our original cupcake problem, do you understand why we got 200 as the answer? Yes, but then what is the solution? Parentheses, or round brackets. When programming in Python, we can use parentheses to control the order of operations. Let's see how. In the cupcake problem, we would like Python to first perform the subtraction and then multiply the result with 25, right? For this, we can put parentheses around the part of the calculation we would like performed first. So, we type parentheses 520 minus 12, end parentheses, asterisk 25. 
Now check what you get. Press return key and 12,700. That's the answer we were looking for. Good. Now that you know how to do calculations directly with numbers, I can introduce you to variables. Tell me, Sophia, you know how much money you'll make if you produce 520 cupcakes in a day. But what if the next you could only bake 100 cupcakes and then 130 cupcakes the day after that? What if each day the number of cupcakes spoiled also differed? Would it be a good idea to do the whole calculation for each quantity every time? No, it would be nice if we could use some sort of a formula for that. Exactly. You're very smart. This is where variables come in. You can think of variables as some sort of named placeholders. Imagine having three containers, each with a different name. Let's say they're named Cupcakes Made, Cupcakes Spoiled, and cost of each cupcake. In each container, we can store a number of our choice. And whenever we want, we can remove the number and put some other number in the containers. Each of these containers can be thought of to be variables. In Python, we place numbers into variables using the equal sign. So, if we want to tell Python to store the number 520 in the cupcakes made container, I mean variable, we type cupcakes made equals 520. We can say that the value of cupcakes made is 520. To find out what value a variable holds, we use the print command, followed by the variable name in parentheses. Type the following and tell me what you get. Press return key and, hey, great, it gives the output 520. But here's one thing I didn't understand. Why did you put an underscore for all the variable names? Why couldn't you just call the first variable as cupcakes made with a space in between? That's a good observation. You see, when it comes to naming variables in Python, there are certain rules that you need to follow. Variable names can be made up of letters, numbers, and the underscore character. The variable name cannot have spaces in between any other special characters, but you can use an underscore to separate words. Oh, and you cannot start the variable name with a number. Also, variable names are case sensitive, so make sure you're careful about which letters in the variable names are in capital. It's always a good idea to keep the variable name meaningful so that you'll understand later on what the variable names represent. I'll give you a few variable names and you tell me which ones are legal in Python. Well, a dot is a special character, so that can't be right. I can't have spaces in the variable name, so no. And a variable name cannot start with a number. I think out of all four, the only legal variable name here is Sophia underscore two. That's right. Let's move on. So you know how to create and print variable names. Let's see how to use them. Let's give values to each of our variables, cupcakes made, cupcakes spoiled, and cost of each cupcake. Enter the following. Now, instead of using numbers, we can perform our calculations using the variables that hold them. So we type. If we press Enter, we'll get our earlier answer, 12,700. We can store the result of this calculation in another variable as follows. If we press Enter, so now the variable money earned on day one will hold the value 12,700. What about day two? So on day two, you produced 100 cupcakes and let's say five of them got spoiled. Then you'll just let the variable cupcakes made hold the value 100 and cupcakes spoiled hold the value five. The cost of each cupcake remains the same. So there's no need to change the value of the third variable. Now, 
Copy and paste the earlier formula for calculating the money earned and store the result in a new variable called money earned on day two as follows. If we press enter, we will get our earlier answer, 12,700 as well. The same way, on day three, 130 cupcakes were made and say, no cupcakes were spoiled. I know, let me type it out. I simply copy out the last three lines, paste it, and change some values, like this. If we press enter, I got the answer 3,250. Good job! So you see how helpful variables are? Yes, they allow you to represent calculations as formulae that can be reused by copying and pasting. That's right. They're also helpful for many other purposes. We'll see these later. For now, it's enough for you to know that variables are a way of holding values to be used later. Okay then, Sophia, question time again. Okay, I'm ready. Question 1. Which of the following symbols represents division in Python? A, plus sign, B, asterisk, C, hyphen, D, backslash, E, underscore. The answer is D, backward slash. That's correct. Question 2. Which of the following is not a valid variable name in Python? A. Monty Python 2. B. Monty Python underscore 2. C. 2 underscore Monty Python. D. Monty 2 Python. E. Capital M Monty Python 2. You had told me that a variable name cannot start with a number, so I would say the answer is C. 2 underscore Monty Python. That's right. Question 3. What result will Python give for the following calculation? 5 plus parentheses 20 minus 5 end parentheses backslash 5 asterisk 2. Is it A. 8 B. 11 C. 6.5 D. 10 E, zero. You had told me that the operator within the parentheses has higher precedence. So subtraction is performed first, 20 take away 5 equals 15. After that, division and multiplication have precedence. And the operation moves from left to right. So in this case, division is done first. 15 divided by 5 gives 3. Then multiplication is done, so 3 times 2 gives 6. Finally, it's time for addition. So 5 plus 6 gives 11. The answer is B, 11. Excellent. You've done really well, Sophia. After this, we'll cover more on variables. Oh, I can't wait.